In that case, may, okay, you can read this to the choice of some constraint of risk, yes? Uh, due to time constraints, uh, I propose that any further questions uh, are delayed until the until the next uh, break. And in the meantime, we will please stand by while we set up for the next speaker. Uh, <laughs> Is it working? Is it working? The... Oh, yeah. That doesn't really work. So you have enough space. You ready? All right. The next, our next speaker is uh, Dorsaf Sharif, and uh, the title of our presentation is "No Arbitrage Conditions and Pricing from Discrete Time to Continuous Time Strategies." Please. <clears throat> So, uh, hello, uh, yeah, <clears throat> uh, first of all, uh, on behalf of all my uh, friends and organizing committee, I want to say thank you for coming and uh, I hope you will, you will come back again. So, today I speak about uh, no arbitrage conditions and pricing from discrete time to continuous time. Actually, it's a joint work with my PhD supervisor, Emmanuel. <clears throat> so, as he already said, the problem of giving a fair price to a financial to a financial asset is very important in the economic in the economic uh, and financial theory what 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 is a price it is an initial capital which allows to start a strategy to start a portfolio okay at uh, whose value at a fixed future date is larger or equal than g i will explain more uh, after so it's natural to to seek for the infimum of such prices the minimum what we will call the super hedging prices so uh, characterizing and computing uh, this super hedgeable prices is fundamental in in the theory of asset pricing habitually it is done under uh, when uh, the no arbitrage condition, what we what we will do here is that we will under, introduce the weakest one, the weakest uh, possible non arbitrage condition, call it absence of immediate profit. Then we will give a new construction of continuous time financial market model from discrete time process. So he, he uh, essentially uh, spoke about uh, uh, discrete time models. Here we will go to continuous time. To do so, we introduce a new topology in L0. Then we will generalize this notion of absence of immediate profit to the continuous time model. Uh, then we will study the super hedging prices this um, infimum prices in continuous time and finally we will extend the set of uh, discrete time portfolios without changing the infimum price and we will get 
a bet a good form of the set of super hedging prices. So I already announced the plan. So I will uh, modelize again the uh, the financial market within the probability framework which is actually a good framework to, to modelize finance because you have uh, alias in the market, you have information in the market. It can be anything, the weather, the crisis, the corona crisis or wars or anything else that can affect the prices. And so the, the decisions you will make, so we have this random, informations that we modelize by the random variables. This is why we use the probability framework. So we have D risky assets, it can be anything. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, which who, prices are given by a, a positive RD uh, vector. That is this price. This one, yeah. This is the price of the first asset, the price of the second asset, etc. And the quantity held by an agent at time t is will be denoted by theta t that we call strategies. So I think he already explained this. And then we will modelize using what we call a complete filtered probability space. That is, this is the uh, the the probability space this what with which we will model the omega will contain the informations of the market that i uh, from which i gave already some examples and this will be a filtration that is ft is included in ft plus one and what is in ft are sigma algebras and what contains FT? T is to modelize the time. And at time T, FT contains the information available at this moment. That is what I know today uh, will not be the same thing that I know tomorrow or yesterday, but what I know today contains what I've already known yesterday. So th this is modelized by filtration. And in general, we will stop at some time big T, uh, uh, like he already uh, mentioned. Uh, the, for example, you have a contract, like an option, okay? In one month, for example, big T will be one month. And in one month, I have to do a transaction. I'm obliged to do some, to give some amount of money and to, uh, in the future, because I have already signed a contract to do it. Okay, so I have to see what strategy will I uh, choose to have this amount of money or, or more. Okay, so I have a future uh, uh, transaction to, to do at time, at time big T, what we will call the horizon. Okay, uh, so we, the ST will be adapted to the FT and uh, also the strategies, okay? Oh, sorry. So, the discrete, what is the discrete time? It is uh, when time is, uh, takes discrete finite, uh, uh, that is, it's fixed from the beginning that it will be, for example, every day or every month or if it's fixed, okay? Uh, we consider a discrete time filtration. And uh, naturally, what he called the, I will call the portfolio value, or he said the liquidation value, it's the same thing. So if you sell or you, what you have, what you will get, okay? Uh, so it's the inner product, theta T, ST, and under the condition of um, uh, uh, self-financial uh, fi self portfolios that he explained, we will, obtain this form of the liquidation value or of the portfolio value, okay? This is in discrete time. 
So now, now we aim to work in continuous time. That is, we will trade in high frequency, which is natural because now uh, uh, trading is done by computers. So it's really uh, realistic to speak about uh, continuous time trading. So the more classical definition of the continuous time portfolios uses stochastic integrals. We are not the, the, the first person to, to, to speak about continuous time uh, trading, but it, it usually it's done by stochastic integrals and it is in L2. Our con construction will be in L0 and it will not really use the stochastic calculus. Okay, uh, we aim to extend this, uh, what we will call the no, no arbitrage conditions. I will speak more about them, but we will uh, use to extend them without what uh, without semi-Martingale process, which is also another uh, another um, simplified way to do things. So I will go faster. So. How we will go to continuous time? The first step is that we will define what we call elementary portfolios. What are the elementary portfolios? This is, uh, we will denote by VTT the set of T terminal elementary portfolios, starting with zero at initial capital time. That is, we have no initial capital. And it has the same form of the discrete time model, but the times of Invest, investment are arbitrary deterministic time, but they are not fixed from the beginning, okay? They are arbit arbitrary uh, de uh, deterministic. Or the second model is when the time of, uh, of changing the strategies are what we call stopping times. It does mean that they depend even the time of uh, of changing the strategy are random variables. They, de they depend on the information of the market. For, for example, if the price you put uh, on your, uh, or your computer, if the price is less than $100, less, let's say, you sell or you buy, or, okay? But we are still in a form that is, that looks like deterministic, that looks like, uh, discrete time models. This is the first step. So now we aim to construct limits of what we call it elementary portfolios in such a way that no arbitrage conditions impose it on the set of all discrete time process also holds on the set, on the set of continuous time portfolios. I didn't uh, speak uh, about no, no arbitrage conditions again, we will do it later, but we have when we when we have we had to choose how to go to 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 continuous time we this was our objective clearly it should depend on the topology on the way to converge so in the following we shall we realized that we needed a topology that uh, verifies three conditions okay the first one is what we will call the fatu property so if a sequence converges, xn converges to some x uh, with reference to our topologies, we will have this inequality for the limit using a subsequence from the, our sequence. The second condition, I think, I, no, okay. So the second condition, conditions will be what we will call the positive homogeneity. That is, if, the sequence, if, if a sequence xn converges to some x, Alpha t x n converts to alpha t x, but alpha t is a non-negative f small t uh, random variable. Uh, uh, what is uh, it's okay? I don't know if I explained something. Here, the what is the small t? The small t is the time of the beginning of the trading, and big t is the horizon. Okay. Okay, and the last condition is 
what we will call FT lower bound pres preserving. That is if, if um, yeah, if Xn, if the limit is F small t, let's see, um, it has a, there is something F small t uh, measurable less than the limit, it should be the same for some, for a subsequence of the sequence convergence. Okay, I will give an example of a topology satisfying what we what we want. Okay, we will construct, uh, we will define a pseudo distance with which we will construct what we will call a conditional topology. Okay, so to uh, to construct this uh, to define this pseudo distance, I need uh, this tool uh, called the uh, the conditional essential supremum which is uh, the smallest, uh, uh, we consider H a sub, a sub sigma algebra of big uh, of our uh, sigma algebra F, and what will be the is a conditional essential supremum of our random variable, given this sub, this sub sigma algebra H, it will be the smallest H measurable random variable bigger than F, okay? Analogously, uh, analogously, we can speak about the uh, conditional amphibia. So here, what will be our pseudo, pseudo distance? It will be uh, the distance between X and Y with, will be the expectation of the conditional supremum given FT of X minus Y plus amphibia one. It's actually inspired from the distance generating the uh, the convergence are uh, in probability. Okay, so using this pseudo distance, actually, why I say pseudo distance because it's only it only satisfied the uh, the triangle inequality. But still, we can define a topology uh, using this. We define balls and then neighborhoods and then open sets. So, we consider OT, the topology generated by this pseudo distance, DT. Uh, this topology is not very, let's say, very simple, but it's not Hausdorff. The limits are not uh, unique. Even the set of limits is not really simple. Uh, well, for example, if we take a constant C, anything which, which is less than C converge any sequence which is smaller than this constant will converge to this constant. Okay, it's, uh, it's not a, a common uh, topology, but it had the, 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 pro the, the properties we wanted. So it is positively homogeneous, it is lower bound preser preserving and satisfies the FATU property. Okay. Uh, I will give uh, uh, the, 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 there is a very simple criteria, criterion to, to, to converge for a sequence. It, it's sufficient that the infimum is not minus infinity, is strictly. Uh, also, uh, I will say that a sequence converges to X with reference to our topology if and only if the conditional supremum of X minus Xn plus converges to zero in probability, which will give us this other way to say, to say thing. And this is uh, this uh, inequality actually has a good uh, financial interpretation that I will give after. Okay, so this is why we have chosen this topology. It satisfies what we want and it has a good financial interpretation. So let's speak about financial again. So here, what will be a continuous time portfolio process for us? It will be a limit of, uh, of, simp of um, uh, <coughs> elementary portfolio process, okay? Sorry. So this is the financial interpretation. If we consider, for example, limits by our DT, so we, uh, when we consider a portfolio, a, a continuous time portfolio process, there will, 
exists a discrete time portfolio process such, such that this discrete time will be uh, bigger than this uh, continuous time uh, portfolio process. It means that it is possible to attain this continuous time up to an arbitrary small error. Yeah, here I think you already defined this. What will be a superhedgeable claim? It's uh, something that uh, I will, it's an amount of money that I can uh, begin with an initial capital P small t and add and choose a strategy so that I will have a portfolio value at. Uh, so that at time big T, I will be, I will have an amount of money with which is bigger than this HE, so that I can give this amount of money to someone. Okay, so this is the initial capital, and this is the portfolio uh, process to to super replicate, or we say in finance, or super hedge this hedging, uh, this super hedgeable. Uh, amount of money or what we call contingent claim. So, the set we can speak about this notion in continuous time or in discrete time. Okay, so the set of all superhedgeable claims will be denoted this way and it will coincide with uh, the set of portfolios minus something positive F big T measurable. Now we will consider also the prices. For this superhedgeable claim, I recall what's a price for a superhedgeable claim. It's the initial capital that allows me to add some, to choose a strategy and add a portfolio so that I can super replicate this uh, claim. Okay, so what's a price? A price for a big HT. PT is a price if there exists a portfolio such that. Okay. Naturally, we are interested in knowing the infimum, the minimal capital from which I can begin an investment and obtain what I want. We will be interested in, uh, in the prices for zero. That means the, the initial capitals to, to have a positive uh, portfolio value, to have money, okay? to be positive at the end. So uh, there is a link between the set of uh, uh, price for zero and the set of uh, super hedgeable claim. So here, what's, which is uh, something really interesting about our way of converging, about if we choose a good uh, the this the uh, topology generated by dt is that the infimum the uh, uh, superhedgeable price will be the same if we we work in continuous time or in discrete time which is good because we will not need to to work in continuous time to calculate this infimum we will only consider the discrete time thing and we will find the infimum which corresponds to both. So uh, I will speak briefly about NA because he already defined it. What's uh, the, the arbitrage? Uh, the arbitrage is the possibility to earn money beginning from nothing. Okay, actually arbitrage opportunities are, are uh, realistic. We can find them. We, we, we buy somewhere and we, we sell. Uh, at exactly the same the same time by computer to uh, with a bigger price okay but they are uh, ephemeral they disappear uh, quickly this is why we always speak about na non arbitrage we have this very famous theorem concerning na the that uh, he already uh, gave with to us so na holds if and only if this is the the mathematical uh, definition of na that is the set of uh, positive the set of portfolios uh, beginning from zero intercepted with the positive 
uh, f big t measurable will be zero. There's no, we, if we begin but with zero, we end up with zero, okay? And this is the existence of the probability measure such that is the, the sequence of price is a Q multiple. This, actually this result has already been extended to continuous time models, not by us. The mathematical arguments are based on convex duality, which is possible because the NA condition implies the closedness of the terminal portfolio values. So anything we have done in discrete time will be uh, available for the limits. So we didn't work really with NA because uh, here is the set of, uh, under this condition NA, this is the set of uh, the prices, the, minim the initial uh, capital for some, uh, for some uh, super hedging or super hedgeable claim, which is not a bad form, but uh, it's not simple to, to, to see this supremum. Under a condition which is the completeness of the market, this, uh, this, supremo, this set will contain only one element, so it will be a better, uh, it will have a better form. But it's always interesting to see how, what is the set of prices. Okay, and if it's an interval, it's, it's more uh, simple to, to deal with. So, actually, NA may be difficult to observe in practice. And for these reasons, we will introduce a weaker, no arbitrage conditions, what we will call absence of immediate profit. It is introduced in the following way. What's absence of immediate profit? In NA, we say that it's impossible to begin with zero and end up having money and earn money at the end. In absence of immediate profit, we will say that it's not possible to begin negative, that is to begin with a debt and end up earning money. So this is absence of immediate profit. Mathematically, we will say that the intersection of the set of prices with the negative uh, uh, with the negative uh, random variables, f small t measurable will be zero. Okay. Naturally, if N A holds, absence of immediate profit holds also, because it's a weaker condition. So here we 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 are interested in the prices for zero. Uh, AIP is equivalent to the, uh, the fact that the infimum, the, the infimum of the set of prices is equal to zero or equil equivalently the set of prices is the positive cone. Also, uh, if we will say that under AIP, if there exists a negative price, then the infimum will be automatically minus infinity. This is why we say that it's the weakest condition. Now I will uh, give this uh, other characterization of AAP, which is the, if AAP holds, if and only if actually, for every portfolio process uh, beginning with zero, the essential infimum given FT is negative here we are still speaking in uh, with the elementary portfolios okay we are giving characterization using the elementary portfolios so this uh, equivalence has a financial interpretation that means that there is the possibility of loss oh i'm late so uh, this is another theorem characterizing I, IAP. I will go through theorem. And what I will say is, if we choose our, uh, we choose to converge in our way with our distance dt, then the IAP holds, will hold in continuous time if and only if it will hold in discrete time. So we, we could, generalize 
what we have done with elementary portfolios to continuous time portfolios. Uh, I will stop here, no problem. Okay, so these are some references, actually. So the, the book of Kabanov for definitions, uh, modelization, and A of the financial market. Uh, and this is the, for the, the article of uh, Emmanuel and Paradis where they firstly defined AAP and work it in discrete time. And this is our work when we went to continuous time. Thank you. Thank you. So I have a quick question. Um, in, in a recent paper, me and Mark used something that we call quasi-metric, which we define as something that satisfies the triangle inequality, but is also only zero uh, when the two elements are equal. Do you know if that holds in your case, that the, the, that the metric is only zero? Uh,